What's up on Power Ass Crew? Today we're doing wheel spacers. Now, my rig here, you guys remember a while back I had 35s put on it, 35 1250s, and I'm running Crown Vic wheels, Crown Victoria wheels. So the back spacing of my wheels plus the size of the tire of the 35 and the 1250 wide, the lugs are hitting my leaves. I can't go, I mean, I can't even make it full lock to lock on the steering wheel before my tires are all up in the leaves and it's just grabbing the lugs and popping them like crazy. And sometimes the tire won't turn if the, if the lug is hanging the leaf hard enough. <laughs> Not good. So I was contacted by Rock Tricks and they asked me, would I like to try their spacers? Their winch and a half spacers. Yeah, I said, you know what? I actually need a set. So let's try them out. So I'll put a link down below if you guys need a set and I'm going to show you how to install them. I'm going to give you the safety tips on uh, torque specs, uh, just tricks that goes along with the install. It's cool. All right, so everyone stop the gab and let's get on with the install. Now, before we pull the tires off this thing to put those spacers on, let's just take a look at before. Tire surface, you can see the edge of the flares here. Lean back a little bit so you can see the front flare. You see how tire is in relation to the flare. Now, once the spacers go in, of course, it's gonna push that tire outward and it's gonna make the overall track width wider. Check them out. Got a little card here about are you happy? And I've been I've been uh, talking to one of the reps quite often, and they are really super cool people. So, all right, so we got here wheel spacers technical information. Let's see, half inch right here, and what that is at eight turns, as you're seeing here. Whenever you put your lug nut on your bolt after you put the spacers in place, you must have at least eight full turns of engagement or thread engagement to be in the recommended safe specs. Ooh, shiny. Very cool. I like them. All right, let's get a wheel pulled off and check them out. You can see right here where the steering wheel is a full lock. It's not really full lock, it's just a point that it is now contacted the springs. You see how this lug here will hang up on the leaf. That's not really the worst of it. Let's show you the uh, backside of the tire. Now you can see here, you got a large area of contact here. But you know, with the tire turned driver right now, you're not really seeing the full contact. So let's go over to the other side and look at that. Now look at the engagement there. That lug is completely compressed into that spring. Now if they were sitting in the right position, the lug would actually be hanging on the spring and would not allow the tire to turn at all. And trust me, you try to lay out on the clutch when those lugs are biting into the spring, you'll stall the motor out before the second roll out. So that's where the wheel spacers come in handy, <clears throat> is to push the tire outward to give you clearance on your springs. Well, let's do the driver's side front first. If you're running a manual like I am, make sure you're in gear, hit that emergency brake, lock it in tight, and chalk your tires, make sure you don't roll. Remember people, safety first. All right, let's get the jack and get that thing jacked up. Now look what I've got going on. Don't do it, people. Take the jack. Put jack stands in, set your jack down. Do not depend on that jack holding up your rig while you're working on it. I don't know how many times I've seen people, oh, it'll be all right. It'll hold it up. I've seen those jacks turn loose. It's not a good thing. Jack stands always. Now, we'll put the spacers in, but why do we need them? You see the contact here? You see the contact here, as I showed you earlier? And what happens is whenever you go with much taller tires, that increased height this way like you got this all this lift going on up here but what it also does when it comes out this way that angle as it comes in gets closer to all your suspension components not only that these are 1250 wide whenever you go to a wider tire the inside of your bead could be here but once you go to a wider tire it pushes that bead on the inside or actually the tire tread to the inside which therefore again complicates the situation of making uh, contact with your suspension components another thing that affects it is your wheels you got what you call backspacing backspacing is how far your seat here the bolts on here 
how deep it is in relation to the outside lip. No, the deeper in this way it is, the further it pushes this back into the suspension, or the further back this way this sits, it pushes the whole tire outward out this way and pushes it away from your suspension. So your offset or your backspacing or whatever it is you want to call it plays a major role in how much contact you may or may not have with your suspension components. That's where these come into play. These wheels are actually off of a uh, Lincoln Town Car. So we're going to put those spacers on right there, which will bring them outward an inch and a half, and which really should help, if not totally eliminate any of my contact going on here. So we got them set in there. And let's get some, uh, I bought, we bought some brand new lug nuts. Let's try them out real quick. Now I've got these nice new shiny spacers going on here, and they include a set of lug nuts with it. But I went and bought me another set too. One set is going to be used for the spacers. The other set will be used for the wheels. Now, here's what I run into. These right here are the ones I purchased at the auto parts store. Of course, they'll go up there and they'll fit. Not a problem. But the problem with that is, let's see, which socket have I got? This three-quarter socket fits this, but the 13 sixteenths, uh, yeah, 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 yep, the 13 sixteenths here fits these, but the 13 sixteenths when I go up inside there, which is not a problem, honestly. So what you do is, we're going to use the ones they include with the spacers to go up inside there. So the cause our socket fits up in there, then we'll use the other ones on the outside. Cool. All right, we got these screwed off there. Now, if you guys remember a few moments ago, I mentioned about how many revolutions of engagement that the lug nut needs to have. It was eight revolutions of engagement, a thread that it must bite hold of in order to be safe. Okay, let's get this thing to threads to take hold it's almost there okay we got a little bit of engagement going there so right there see I can't pull it off now so it means the threads are starting to engage with each other and see it's a 13 take my three-quarter socket right there's my three-quarter number and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate that socket and count my revolutions and I must have at least eight full turns in order for that lug stud right there to be long enough for safety. Whoops, hit the camera. All right, so there's one, three quarter right here. There's two here. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're good. I got eight revolutions so far. Let's see what we end up getting. Nine. Oh, I think we just hit it. So I've got about nine and a quarter turns. I'm starting to make contact with it now. So as per the directions, you have to have at least eight turns, eight full turns in order for that lug nut, that lug stud inside here to be a proper length for safety. So I got about nine and a quarter out of it. We're good to go. Now what I've done is I've got two lug nuts here, one here and one here. They're not tight. They're just snugged up. And what that does is because of the conical seat, the tapered seat of the lug nuts, it pulls this thing in center and gets it properly placed to your rotor. So I've got this one right here. It's just partially screwed in. Now this is where some people do it, some people don't. Me personally, I do. Meaning Loctite, Loctite Blue, the 242. Don't use the red. The red's not necessary because the red is like super duty stuff. Really ridiculously hard to get off and you don't want that here. This is just a Loctite Blue is all I'm using. And what a Loctite Blue does, it's an anti-vibration lock lock. So, vibrations, it's not going to back out on you. Take, get up here. Run it in just a little bit. 
And you don't need much of the Loctite either. See, I'm gonna, I've got that to the point it just bottoms out. Take and just dab a little right inside here. See, a little dab, not much. It don't take much at all. In here, get this one started. And just snug it for right now. We're going to torque them in a moment. Now you can go ahead and take the ones that do not have a Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and back them back out. Because now we've got the conical seat of these two holding everything in place. I kind of snugged that apparently. There we go. The clearance is just tight enough that it's rubbing on the socket a little bit. Ta da! Now, a little bit of Loctite Blue. Like I said, not much. Don't need it. Okay. Now here's the trick. I'm out here by myself. Need to put these things. Need I need to tie those to a specific torque. Because what you do not do. See this? That's called a breaker bar. That's a no no. Do not use breaker bars on this. No 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 no. Bad. What do you use? Torque wrench. Right there. Do it properly because you want your torque specs around your lug nuts to be evenly pressing on your lug studs and up on your brake roller and all that fun stuff. You want these torque specs even. Because one of the biggest issues that comes with people putting spacers on their rigs is they'll throw it on there, they'll take a lug wrench, crank it down, say, okay, dude, that's good enough, they're good and tight, and they just let it rip. Bad idea. Torque them down to the proper specs, which will be 100 pounds. Because, I mean, each one of them has to be even, properly, tensioned if you got one loose one tight that's unloading one section of it and that could potentially make the uh, rest of them start coming loose very important very important torque on the proper specs Chrysler calls between 85 to 110 pounds something like that and I want to torque them down to 100 so let's get that done now as I mentioned a moment ago I'm out here by myself so now I'm looking at this like I can't hold the brake what do I do oh no take you some old lug nuts And see how these fully cover the stud? Make sure I run that up on there far enough. And for those of you who don't know, Chrysler's a half inch 20. For the YJs and the XJs, half inch 20. Once you got your old junk lug nuts in place, big pry bar, well I'm using some heavy bar stock here I got laying around, and let it rotate around, get enough engagement going on here that it locks that in place there. That prevents this from turning, because if you're out here like I am a lot of times working by myself, I've got no way of holding the brake. My legs just ain't that long, people. I'm only five foot six. So therefore, that locks in place. We're going to tighten it this way. Got my lug wrench set. Now, remember, I want to torque these to 100 pound feet of torque around all around them, okay? What I like to do is stagger. Well, for one, you got to stagger. I'm going to tighten this one, then tighten this one, so on, so on, so on. So there's going to be some manipulation of moving this bar around. So, since we're going to do this at 100, now we're going to stagger them to do a star pattern, but also you want to 
start out with 50 pounds, do them all first, and come back and go ahead and do a 100 pound torque then. So, I've got set at 50. There's that one. And see so if I can get lucky enough to get the end of that one without doing too much manipulation of this. Can I do it? Let's see. Oop, hit the camera. There we go. Reach around the camera. It's 50. Okay, so we went there, there. Now I'm we'll gonna come over here. Okay, there's that. Okay, we went there, there, there. Now we'll go here. Now we gotta come down to get to this one. So, got another lug nut behind me, which one of those these come off? A lot easier if you got somebody out here to hold the brake for you. Now if you do this lug nut trick, putting that bar in, don't just screw two or three threads in then put them across because what that does, it puts a leverage pressure on your lug, lug studs. You don't want to do that. Run them in as far as they'll go, then it loads them properly. Now let's do this one, 50 pounds. Okay, now we got all five of them at 50 pounds. Now we're going to take our setting. Crank it up to 100. See right there. Look right here. Got to sit at 100 now. We're going to do this again. Now we need to get to this one, and just because of leverage sake, got that one. Yeah, so if we get to that one. this one and again for leverage rotate that around I get my pattern off yep I already got that one so which one doesn't miss I'll come over and check this one move the lugs tonight Now whenever you're torquing it, 
the width of your torque head, uh, torque wrench head right here. Don't let it bind against the stud damage, then you'll get improper readings. Now come around and check them all. Here's that one. We got that one, that one. Cool. Now I'll show you guys something. Got all five of them torqued. And what I meant was if you got your torque wrench sitting here like this. Look how much clearance I've got right here. Now, if I was to have the head rotated too closely to that, and it's contacting, if I'm not paying attention, I'm not going to be getting proper tor torque readings simply because this is taking the pressure and not your rotational force here. So be sure to watch your clearance and not get too close to your lug studs, or if you're doing the lug nut trick like I am, that you don't get too close to get improper torque readings. Okay, at the risk of sounding like I'm totally over-repeating myself, I want to re-emphasize re this again. Don't just, when using the wheel adapters, or heck, even just putting up aftermarket wheels or even steel wheels, torque your, torque your lug patterns, people, seriously. These, any of your aluminum mag wheels, stuff like that, on your Chrysler, your Jeeps, whatever, on the half-inch 20 bolt patterns, half-inch 20 is your thread, and you got a four and a half-inch bolt pattern, it should be right about the ballpark of 100 pounds. 85 to 110, but I like, I like 100 pounds because, hey, it's just easy to remember. 50 pounds on your torque wrench setting first. 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. Notice the star pattern here, 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 here. Reset your torque wrench to 100 pounds. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, okay? Tighten everything in steps. Tighten everything in that sequence, and you should be good to go. Now, let's get the tire put on. And for the people out there who are newbies to this whole thing, the conical shape right here, your cone shape, goes inward to the wheel. It goes, see how I've got position my fingers? That way. I know some people are going to say, really, Chuck, you went in that much detail? Yes, I did. Not everybody's cranked wrenches out there, people. Remember that. Now, the thing I've done right now, I've got them good, hard, snug. And now I'm going to pull the jack stand out. Now I also get my torque wrench inside here. It's not going to happen. Even with the deep web because of the inside of the wheel. I'm not going to be able to get a torque wrench in, so of course you go to an extension. Now here's where an argument, can, I ain't going to say an argument, a discussion comes with torquing down wheels or torquing down anything and using an extension. Because using an extension, you get you got to lose a little bit of a torque rotation, I guess you might say. Now how much, I really couldn't tell you. So here's what I do. Again, set my torque wrench to 50 pounds. I'm going to go around that star pattern. Here. There. 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 And there. Now I've got 50 pounds all the way around in the star pattern. Crank my torque wrench up to 110 pounds. Okay, so some of you are going to say, no, wait a minute, Chuck, you said 100 pounds. I said, and you're correct, I did. But that was on the wheel adapter side here. Remember what I just said. 
using the extension, you're going to lose a little bit of the torque. And I also say the Chrysler recommends 85 to 110 foot pounds or pound feet, whatever, of torque settings on your lug studs. Well, since I'm using the extension here, I'm going to put another 10 pounds on it and go to 110 pounds of torque. And notice I had my hand right here that I turned it loose. Again, this is one of those nitpicky things some people believe in, some people don't. If you take it here and you're pulling up and you're pushing down because you're putting all that power into it, you can actually manipulate your torque setting by pulling up on this right here too much. You want the rotational force, your hands out here on the torque wrench, pushing down, allowing that pivot right here on your torque wrench, doing it properly. So, I mean, if you just need to feel, make yourself feel good, put your hand in case something slip, but I've really got no pressure on it. See, 110 pound pop right there. Come over here, star pattern here, here. See, I had no pressure here. I just kind of a mental thing, I guess. Come up here to this one. Again, the star pattern. Come down to this one, finish out your star. And check them one more time. Ten pounds, all five lugs. Okay, we got the driver's side done. You can see the stick out from the fender flare right there. Let's get a little closer, give you guys a good look. Driver's side, passenger side has not been done yet. You can see the stick out difference right there from the flare. Big difference. Now to prevent from making this video ridiculously long, I'm going to go ahead and install the other three spacers. No point in video in them because what I showed you on the driver's side front, you do the same thing on the other three, okay? So I'm going to get these other three knocked out real quick, and now I'll be back with you in just a bit. Come over here on the passenger side, and something dawned on me that I did not point out to you guys a moment ago. Take your wheel spacer, and you put it on, and you take your lug nut, and you roll it in, no, you turn it in eight times like I showed you over there minimum of eight if you go nine if you go ten great that's just a bonus for you but minimum eight revolutions of that lug nut so what if you don't get that what if you only get six what if you only get five well do not do not do not do not do not trust it because you don't have enough thread engagement for it to be get optimal strength and it'd be safe so what do you have to do think about it in order to get all those revolutions you need, you're going to have to put longer studs in. If you're not getting all the revolutions you need, eight turns minimum, that means your lug studs are too short. you got to press all these studs out and put new, new studs in that are longer than these. Now, that's a video for a later day, but I just want to point that out to you guys. If you don't get at least eight revolutions of your lug nut going in, you got to put longer lug studs in. Once you get everything all torqued to specs, what do you do next? Look, I've still got this set on 110. Take your torque wrench, loosen it all the way up. You see where it's just kind of loose handle now? Taking to stops, bump it up back a little bit. Therefore, that spring inside here has no pressure on it and it doesn't knock it out of spec. Wheel spacers installed, let's check our clearances now. Now we do have it, I got neighbor holding the uh, wheel complete to, to lock. So this is our maximum clearance. Got our space in there. Now come over here to the back side where I had the worst interference at. Look at that, sweet. Got about three fourths of an inch of clearance now where it was all up in that spring. A little bit of light there we go here's light we have clearance now sweet much better and there she is afterwards got those tires sitting out there a little further now inch and a half on each side three inches overall 
Now, one thing that needs to be said about using wheel spacers, check your local laws about uh, how much tire you can have outside your flares. There's some states that you cannot have any tire at all sticking outside the flares. I live in Tennessee, we can do whatever the heck we want to. So again, just check on your local laws as to whether you should be able to do that. You got your spacers installed, got everything torqued to specs, and now you're done. No, 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 not so fast, no you're not. Here's what you need to do next. Once you get all four wheels, wheels and tires back on, you know everything's torqued to specs like it's supposed to be, take it out for a ride. Run about 20 miles or so, bring it back to the house, pull a tire off, check your lug nuts that's holding your spacers on. I also want to check your wheel, your lug nuts for your wheels too. You don't want them backing off. Everything needs to be exactly what you torqued it at. The rings, the spacers, those need to be 100 pounds. Your tires need to be 110 where you torqued them before. All four tires, check it. Everything needs to be proper torque specs after that 20 miles. Now, for whatever reason, if you was to come back and you find one that's at 80 pounds or something like that, you find one that's not seated correctly or it's actually working loose, what you need to do is torque that one back to specs check all four of them again take it for another ride 20 miles or so come back and check it at check the one that came loose check it again now let's just say hypothetically that one just keeps coming loose what the heck what's going what's up take your spacer back off check the hub assembly or the rear drum where whatever if it's front or rear whichever case may be be sure you've got no debris behind it no build up of rust dirt mud crud whatever and if it does, you want to clean all that junk out so your uh, spacer has a proper seating on the hub assembly or on the rear drum. That is imperative. You've got to make sure it's clean behind that. So, uh, you know, if that doesn't fly and you get all that good and clean, you take it for another test drive and it works loose again, what may be happening, notice that little center, um, like where the axle nut goes through right there, you want to be sure that your spacer isn't riding on top of that you know that part number and I, I put a link down below where you guys order you some up is for the xj's yj's and such like that for the jeeps because they got the proper bolt spacing and the proper center diameter but if you just happen to pick up a rogue set somewhere and you think oh my these are work because they're four and a half inch lug pattern that center hole can be a, you know a little bit of a deterrent for you so you got to watch that and also if you're running custom wheels that center hole on the outside of the spacer can be an issue for you as well so be sure you're everything's seating flat and proper on the bolt pattern and not on top of that ring that is very important because you'll never get anything to spec if it's sitting on top of that ring so you want to sit flat on the bolt pattern and you'll be good to go so all right everyone if you enjoyed that video hit me with a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't leave some cool comments down below and i'll leave a link down below where you guys can order you sell these spacers if you want some for your rig cool all right everyone appreciate you hanging out with me peace out later y'all